So uh, Spider-Man No Way Home, which I saw on Tuesday and um, and it opened almost immediately. So it was like the, the, the big screening was just be- just before the opening. So I imagine that we will have had... Uh... Yes, I've got some correspondence. Okay, fine. So at the very beginning, and I'm saying this to you as much as to me, at the very beginning of the screening, um, somebody came on and said, look, can you all not spoil this? There's things in the movie not to spoil, so please don't spoil them. And then before the movie played, we had a little video of the central cast member saying, please don't spoil the things that are in the movie. It's kind of difficult to talk about the movie, but I am going to do my I'm going to do my very, very best to not give away anything um, that I don't have to give away. I would say, obviously, if you're completely, you know, hanging on tenterhooks about Spider-Man No Way Home, you don't know anything about it. Just stop listening. Mm -hmm. I believe Steve Wright is currently doing all requests. Friday? No, I do that. That's you. I do that. Okay. He does not do that and has never done that. Doesn't he? Okay. I'll be doing that later. I do get you confused. Greatest hits radio. Anyway, okay. So, picks up uh, from the end of Far From Home with uh, Spider-Man's identity as Peter Parker, as played by Tom Holland, being revealed. Suddenly, the whole world knows who he is and has turned against him, uh, rallied by uh, J. John Jameson. As a result of his fame and notoriety... Because obviously everyone's kind of now very against him. But this was always a Spider-Man thing. Was that you know always being called a, a villain, which is the kind of which is part of the, the sort of superhero stuff. He finds that college applications are rejected not only for him but for those close to him. So in desperation, he goes to see Doctor Strange to ask him if there's anything he can do to fix the situation in which everyone knows who he is. Here's a clip. You ready? I'm ready. Nice knowing you, Spider-Man. Wait, excuse me? The entire world's about to forget that Peter Parker is Spider-Man. Everyone? Uh, can't some people still know? That's not how the spell works. So my girlfriend's just gonna forget about everything we've been through? I mean, is she even gonna be my girlfriend? All right, fine. Everyone in the world's gonna forget that you're Spider-Man, except your girlfriend. Thank you so much. Oh my God, Ned. Okay, let's not change the parameters of this spell anymore while I'm casting Okay, I'm done, it. I'm done. I-, I swear I'm done, I'm done. Nah, but my Aunt May should really know. Dude, <laughs> just oh, stop talking to <laughs> And that's it as far as any plot details need to be mm-hmm. spoken about. Like many Spider-Man fans, I was kind of interested because we had an email from somebody saying that they didn't like Into the Spider-Verse. That they yes, it was a passing reference, yes. I was surprised mm-hmm. by that because I loved Into the Spider-Verse. I thought it was really, really adventurous. And I think that what happens with uh, Spider-Man No Way Home is that it's taking a baton from Into the Spider-Verse in terms of how are we going to... How are we going to sort of meta-textualize a story? How are we going to make it into something that's self-referential and fun at the same time? So I think that what the film does is it builds on the legacy of uh, Into the Spider-Verse, albeit in a live-action way, albeit that any Spider-Man live-action film is a huge amount of it is animation anyway, because special effects are, of course, animations. So rather than drawn animation, it's your kind of digital animation. The screening that I saw was in the IMAX screen uh, in what I still think of as the Empire Leicester Square, but it's no longer referred to, to as that. It's changed its name. And it was packed with fans who went nuts. There were, I counted, six separate occasions when the crowd burst into whoops and cheers. And one of the reasons was that it was almost like watching a rock band, I don't mean this as a criticism, who regularly played their greatest hits. It's not like, hello, we'd like to play you our new concept album. Yeah. You know, <laughs> this is Spinal Tap Mark II. This is Jazz Odyssey by Derek Smalls on bass. He wrote this. It is a film which is absolutely embedded in the idea of looking back to, the, to its own past and calling back to its own past and doing so in a way which is kind of cheeky and irreverent and celebratory and seeing it with the fan audience. Often when people say it's a film for the fans, that is meant as a criticism, you know, it's meant, I mean, we've talked about this with Ghostbusters Afterlife because I thought that what Ghostbusters Afterlife did was simply go, you remember that bit you liked? Here it is. You remember that thing that you liked? Here it is. That's not the case with this because I think this is doing something more interesting. And in fact, there was an entire middle section of the film in which I very, very much enjoyed the interaction between the central characters. It is in the end, a very big episode of Doctor Who. 
And again, that's not necessarily a bad thing because I love Doctor Who and the Doctor Who that I'm thinking of is Doctor Who in the 1970s, in which a lot of the stuff that the film is dealing with is exactly the sort of stuff that the Doctor Who creators would suddenly go, well, what if? The special effects stuff is special effects. I I don't think they've ever adequately got round the issue of how to make Spider-Man swinging from building to building in live action convince. I mean, I remember I re- remember reviewing Spider-Man 2 for The Observer when it first came out. And of course, you know, I was a huge Sam Raimi fan because of The Evil Dead. And you know, I love the fact that Sam Raimi was as lovely as he was because, I, you know, I just love the idea that somebody who made a film that was hauled through the British courts on obscene publications charges was Sam Raimi, who ended up making this massive franchise thing. Um, so the film is, for me, a stretch it's slightly too long but there is a great big middle section of it which makes sense and when it gets into its final act it also retains a dramatic a dramatic arc that gets it to where it needs to be and doesn't simply fall down into the let's just have a whole bunch of people hitting each other so it doesn't do that Afterwards, I spoke to my friend Jack Howard, who is much more invested in this whole one. He was just thrilled. And he said he felt like he could heave a sigh of relief because everything was where it should be. I enjoyed it. I thought it was fine. I thought there were some things in it that were very, very funny. The fans went nuts. If you want to know more about the details, see the film.